Hello, uh, another episode of the John Sitton Football Uncensored podcast uh, with me, Joe Mealing, asking the questions. Um, today, we are doing an overview of the season, the 2021-2022 season, John. Uh, fans are back. Um, going to be interested how it compares to last season. Um, my first question to you is Harry Kane. Citizen, okay. Citizen Kane. Yeah, um, yeah, so they said, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they said. Um, the saga yeah. continues. Um, and I think where he goes, I, I, I put this to you, where he goes or if he goes, has a big bearing on how the season pans out. Yeah, uh, probably will. Yeah, probably will. Yeah. So yeah. will he go? Should he go? Should he stay? Is it a good signing for Man City? Um, yeah. Um what happens? What should happen? Look, I don't think I'm betraying any confidences now. Um, and it's not my style to do so. No. So we're clear about that. Um, but when my oldest daughter um, started courting, who is now her husband, uh, they've like family friends of Harry's family. So as a consequence, I got to meet um, his mum and his dad and his brother. Obviously, Harry's was Harry was always preoccupied. And he weren't really uh, going to start coming to, you know, Christmas parties and August bank holiday barbecues and birthday parties and all that where the drink was flowing because I, I know for sure he's a top draw professional. But I said to his, I got talking to his dad and I said to his dad, and I'm going back now. Uh, good three years. So we've had COVID 16 months that before that, uh, 2019 would have been my, yeah, so 2018, it would have been my oldest girl's 30th birthday, which I think was the last time we got together socially. And I said to him at the time, what he should be looking to do is, um, as I correctly predicted, Spurs will implode. Pochettino will ultimately get the sack. Levy's going around in circles. He's uh, a self-appointed uh, financial genius, although I think he's been mugged off. And then what happens is it all becomes a game. When they talk about him being the master of negotiation and the tough negotiator, you know, basically you're declaring your hand on how things are going to go. You're better off being a tough negotiator within the confines of four walls, not not within like the confines of national media. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. That's my opinion on it, right? Um, well, I said, I said, why don't he f think about, you know, having a move? I said, because I was told the game's about money and medals. He said, well, he's coming up for renegotiation of his contract. So I think the money side of it would be all right. So I said, right, so that leaves the medals. I said, he won't win anything at Spurs, right? And I was proved right. So after five years there, and I got the couple of cup finals. One of them was the Champions League. Um, but in the end, he's, he's won nothing. Yeah. What his dad said to me at the time was, it, it'd be lovely. Don't you think it'd be lovely if he could win um, something at the club that he came he came through the ranks and grew up at, right? So I said, uh, yeah, from a, from an idealist idealistic or idealist point of view, idealistic point of view, you know, it would be. Yeah, so I said, it's quite romantic. I said, but it won't happen. And then I forecast what I've just told you on air and it all came true what I said at the time was he needs to go to a club that's um, an eye achieving club not full of um, what Frank Clark used to call worky tickets which is like I think a northern expression were a bit it's a bit spivvy you know what I mean people call it spursy but it's a bit jack the laddish and a bit you know if you hear the thing within Walshy on the thing last night they gave a preview last week on Talk Sport that's been known for like decades what the kind of thing but he's now the confidence part comes in comes in this comes from this. He said to me at the time, uh, so I'm going back three years, and then he said to me three years ago, so that would that would be a total of six years. And when I'm talking to him, Harry was round about the 25 mark. So I'm assuming that Harry would have been round about 22 at the time. He said he could have gone to Manchester City, and he, he turned them down because he wanted to stay at Spurs. Now it's turned full cycle. And all of a sudden now they're talking about him going to Manchester City. And if I'm Manchester City, someone said on Twitter, Joe, very quickly as a little by the way, right? Someone said on Twitter that if he, if he wants to go to that soulless oil rig, let him. 
Mm. Um, you know, if you don't want to stay here at a club, you know, that's where he grew up and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the first line struck me and I thought, you know what, even if it is, which it is, it's, um, yeah, mate, it's a combination of, they'd all like, it's like a, what they call a high class problem, isn't it? They, they all slag it off, but they'd all love the opportunity to have the money to spend. You know, people like Wenger said, state sponsored football, right? But I worked it out, even if it was state-sponsored football, if he's going to be a, um, a responsible custodian, right, um, Guardiola and this uh, Tiki, I don't know how you say his mm. name, mm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pay it. I worked it out. <coughs> Excuse me. I worked it out very quickly because I'm catching up on different newspapers and I just see like, a load, big pile of newspapers. My missus keep bringing on, I ain't read them, so I flick through them. And then the initial one was, uh, they're talking about 160 million, right? Mm. So then they're talking about wages of 400 grand a week. So then you're talking about it over four years, right? So 160 over four years, that's 40 million a year. That's 800 grand a week. Plus he's 400 grand a week. That's 1.2 million a week. That's before the bum fluffery of a signing on fee, what I call the bum fluffery, right? The signing on fee, the agent's fees, which would go to his brother, Charlie, and um, image rights. So... I've got to question the wisdom of giving the equivalent of maybe 1.5 million a week for a 28 year old who's going to have no resale value. It's literally like you're talking, um, yep, silverware, and we don't care what we pay to get it. We're going to pay it and we're going to get it, right? Yeah. Knowing that what's, what, what are the winners of the Premier League? What do they get? Uh, and I don't know, two hundred and fifty right. mil was two hundred mil or something. Right. Well, they, they've got they've got a, basically they've got a guarantee to, to to get any sort of benefit from it. They've got a guarantee, which there are no guarantees. Um, to get anywhere near their money back, they've got a guarantee they're going to win the Premier League. And I and I still not, I'm still not convinced that um, he doesn't just leave it to the players to sort things out at the back. And I've known managers, and I've heard of managers who do that. And uh, I played at clubs where managers did that and coaches did that. But I'm not convinced they're going to get away with it. Um, having said that, if Harry goes there, I should imagine that the title will be almost a foregone conclusion. And he'll probably score, you know, 30 goals and 22 of them will be tappings inside the six-yard box. Um, you, you mentioned before about the getting players or teams that sell players should sell them just after midnight, i.e. just after their their best, the peak. Yeah. yeah. Teams that buy players should be buying them just before they at their peak or when they're at their peak. Where do you see Harry Kane on the on the the sundial on the clock face? Yeah, well it depends if one? we're going if we're going on his form in the Euros. I was a bit arsed really. Um you know, I said like he, he was sort of lumber, lumbering around like a lummox, you know what I mean? It's mm. probably a bit harsh, but I'll tell you, um, it might be the injection he needs because what I see is I see a very lethargic character mm. in terms of, uh, he's not he's not really quick anyway. He's not particularly quick. I think he's, pow he's powerful and probably if he gets into his stride, he's probably going to be hard to shake off the ball or get under him and make the tackle, you know what I mean? But... Yeah. Um, when I've seen him at his best is when whoever he's playing with plays a shorter game. Um, when he's playing with England, he seems to come a long way deep for a pass that's not particularly... Uh, the only pass for all the Euros I saw punched into him with quality, with pace, with purpose, with tempo was Harry Maguire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where he punched the ball, and I'm, 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 I specifically remember it. I'm not. You could cite the the, the, the Grealish cross against Germany, etc. But I just thought, like by and large, he looked he, right throughout the tournament. He looked very lethargic, and uh, I think for Harry to benefit, um, any team that he plays for, you need a, a slight adjustment on the tactics. Which I think, under the new manager Nuno, um, I'm not sure he's made for that system. Right, he's got to be in a system, and for him to look, any system where for him to look effective, it needs a supply of crosses, right? Mm. Which I'm going to come to. It needs a supply of crosses, and it needs the team to shorten its game. 
So what I mean by that is it's like pop, 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 pop. And when he comes off, well, like when you're coaching the centre forward, or when I used to coach, I don't know about other people, when I used to coach centre forwards, and if, if you do like front the back, come off quick, right? When it comes into you, it's either got to come in and pop one touch with quality, quality or it's got to come in and you've got to get your body in and make it stick because you're trying to get your team up the field. Yeah. And then it goes off with a second touch with quality. Yeah. Right? But Harry looks at his best, and I think uh, the team looks at his best, whatever team he's playing, whether it's England, is when the game's shortened and when he's higher up the field. I just think it looks to... Now, the crossing aspect of it, right? Let me put this to you. Um, when you look at Manchester City teams of the recent past, right? It's been all about the decision-making and movement and the quality and execution of the pass and then the delivery. So when I'm talking about the quality of the pass, I'm talking about the timing and the weight of the pass, right? Mm -hmm. And it's gone bump, 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 bump. And then as they get up around the box, it goes bump, 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 bump. And then all of a sudden it's whipped in and cross, uh, finish one touch, right? Yeah. Have a look how many times yesterday where Grealish actually slowed the game down. When all he had to do was, if he was going to carry on with the recent pass of, say, like, um, uh, was it Bernardo Silva and then particularly David Silva? Yeah. Where it just go like one touch to, to soften it and the second touch to whip it. Yeah. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you'd have no someone dwelling. crashing in. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like uh, Aguero would come, Jesus or Sterling for a one touch finish. Yeah. I'm looking at how many times yesterday he slowed the tempo of the attack down. Hmm. And I, yeah. and I honestly, I think I think it's counterintuitive if that's the right expression to what City have been all about over the last two, three, four, five seasons since he's been there. May well, but I mean, Mares arguably does sort of the same. He tends to chop and chop in, chop out, and have a lot of touches on the ball. Is is that because they're expecting Kane to come? Because you can imagine Mares and Grealish, maybe. Uh, no, there's a difference. Technically, there's a difference. Mahrez mm. will do it yeah. when he has to wait. When he, he, he listen, he's he, he's an highly intelligent top draw. They both are, right? Yeah. Top draw footballers, but he'll do it. Mahrez will do it because he's waiting for people. Mm. You understand? He's waiting for people to catch up. He's waiting for people to underlap. He's waiting for someone to overlap. He's waiting for someone to come off and show. He's yeah. waiting for uh, bodies to help flood the, the box. Then you'll find his next touch is a, a pass or a delivery. In. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, and there's a difference. I just, I just thought he slowed it down too many times. Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, I mean, but he'll, that... he'll be onto him. He'll be onto him. Guardiola will be onto him. He's because, like the commentator said, he sees a different game to everybody else. So <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be onto him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Then you hear some bollocks, really, just to wipe <laughs> things up, just to fucking hype things up. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Um... Yeah. Okay, so uh, we think it's a great signing. Uh, that although, game that he sees to everybody else obviously didn't include the Champions League final. Well, yeah. yeah. Fucking back, back by, back by a, a, a country's uh, uh, GDP. Sovereign and the, wealth uh, fund, yeah. Yeah. Um, so just, just to, just to reiterate on the, on the Kane thing, a good sign in and he'll be successful when they'll win the league and, you know, might push the Champions League, but too much money and, that's my opinion. Particularly yeah. with his, yeah, just just to summarise, yeah. No, okay. He's cat, he's cattled, he's cattled. I mean, at the end of the day, Levy is holding all the aces, and allegedly on the radio, if I'm reading reading it right, and I'm reading between the lines, um, when he went in and negotiated this new five or six year contract, whatever it is, the last one it was, he signed. Mm. He was promised via his um, representative that uh, gentleman's agreement. If the right money came in, the right bid came in, they'd allow him to go if, if Spurs weren't on the verge of winning anything. Um, and um, it looks like, uh, allegedly, or it looks like it's indicating like he's gone back on his word. He's reneged. But at the end of the day, yeah, he's reneged on, on, on a promise. Now, at the end of the day, he That's ain't surprising. the first and he won't be the last. Right? But he holds all the cards. Levy holds all the cards. And that these people don't get where they are Right, without being hard nosed in business. No. And he holds all the aces. So the, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the stories thing coming down, and uh, he never turned up for training. Then you've got conflicting reports, and he never turned up for the uh, allocated slots for blood tests and COVID testing and this, that. 
and they, they're, in, they're doing pre-season and all the rest of it. And then they leave him out yesterday because they said he weren't fit enough. So it's all become a silly game. It's all become a little bit polluted and a little bit toxic and a bit of a whiff coming off because obviously he's got the ump because the geezer's gone back on his word. And then they've gone, well, you can have the ump as much as you like. We hold all the aces. <laughs> so, there, so there you are. What, what's happened is it's almost gone, um, not without credit, but it's almost gone under the radar. The fact that they won um, by defending resolutely they got very physical they got right wide into man city they even conceded possession to manchester city and mm. made and settled for recovery runs and putting up a screen or a block and then when the passes were made they thought they could pinch it then when they they came crashing in and they typical nuno side they, they tried to hit the opposition on the break with pace well, similar um, to Mourinho, what, really yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, hmm. it, it, the only thing is, he's always, he always. I think he's done it with a bit more flair. Nuno's done it with a bit more flair. Yeah. Um, okay, Even so at Wolves, a bit more style. Wouldn't surprise me if someone from Wolves ends up at Spurs. Yeah, someone like Player. True Away would be. Uh, yeah, would be awesome, yeah, yeah. wouldn't it? Although yeah. Neto has been injured, injured for the whole season. I think mean, he's, he's, he's in a bad way. Um, whatever's gone on, very quickly, Joe. Whatever's gone on there, he's managed it really, really well because. He's made the players, um, we already knew about Son, but the other players who were just hovering on on the periphery, he's made them feel really important and sort of brought a sense of realisation that, like, here's your opportunity, grab it with both hands and yeah, see yeah. if you can be, you know, be part of the side that doesn't include uh, Harry Kane. Well, the team spirit looked good, didn't it? You know, which is which is great to see. And as you mentioned about Spursy and, you know, being Jack Ladd and arrogant, Um yeah, hopefully that, that that there isn't. If Kane goes, there isn't any real, real big top top level players or big big character or big names. I mean, you have got Son, but maybe they'll be a bit more humble and, and play as a unit. Um, maybe, maybe it's a good thing for Spurs. Yeah, I remember uh, having a book signed as a kid. Uh, the Arsenal manager Bertie Me, who actually started as a physiotherapist there, and um, he actually put put in. Uh, he said he put remember exclamation mark. So along the lines of the total sum of the parts would always exceed the total sum of the individual. And um, I think that, that was very much the case with Spurs yesterday. I thought the, the other thing that he hasn't had enough credit for is the, the, like the manager, because he's, he's renowned for setting up and being hard to break down Mourinho. And yet, uh, ultimately, they people were going through him like a dose of salt. So it's just, I think they just stopped playing. They started cheating. Yeah. Um, or there was something wrong with the organisation. Whereas yesterday, it's the best I've seen Spurs and the more, most committed I've seen Spurs for a long, 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 long time. And they look really well organised and they look tough and resilient and strong and hard to break down, yeah. which I thought has got to be a, a massive, a massive well done, a massive uh, heads up for for the manager for and his staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, I know we won't keep talking about Spurs, but You've obviously got Deli Ali, who was back in the team. The Dyer, yeah. neither of them were, were involved in England. So, you know, they've got a big, big point to prove. So, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. That. He's had a few off the field problems, Deli, mm. over the last couple of years, I've heard, through the grapevine. Um, I just thought he, look, he looked back to his best yesterday. He looked back yeah. to the old Deli. And it, uh, it was fantastic. It's a new signing, isn't it? Yeah. I just think, like, it's fantastic for England as well. You know what I mean? It's another one. It's another one to throw into the in, into the mix. Yeah. And um, he's where he should be. You know yeah. what I mean? Perf- performing and playing well with, on the, on the, on the Premier League stage. Before we um, before we get on to your your old team Chelsea and uh, and, and Tommy Tuchel's uh, renaissance there, um, yeah. I wanted to mention because we didn't mention it in the last episode because he weren't it wasn't the London team's plan in it, but it was yeah. uh, quite a big derby. Man United leads. Um, yeah, and uh, absolute drubbing from Man United. Um, real impressive performance, um, yeah. particularly from Paul Pogba and uh, yeah. Fernandez. I um, had a chance to talk to anyone, Joe. If I'd have spoke to you, if I'd have, they were all screaming, uh, got, people have got to understand, like, that we, we don't get paid for this and we come together when we can and we love doing it. And I enjoy your questions, but I just want to speak out on your behalf. Mm. Um, and the fact that I've had a tough time lately with regards to outgoings and 
um, my main living being a black cab trade and you, you, you launching a new business and doing 12 hour days trying to get things going. Do you know what mm. I mean? Mm. But if we'd have had a chance to preview the new season, um, uh, soon as you've mentioned the man United is, uh, my tip. Okay. Well, let's, let's unpick that then. Let's unpick <laughs> that. Let's unpick yeah. that. No, um, listen, no, the only reason I'm saying it is because we haven't had a chance to talk. No, I know. And no, it's, 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 I, no, it's nothing. And I've preempted it, right? Because it's nothing to do with giving leads a 5 1 Emery. No, 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 no. Well, that's what I'm, 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 I'm interested in that because yeah. I know. Would you say you're a Chelsea fan? Not on air, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> 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 what I mean is because I know. I know You've got an affinity with Chelsea, shall we? Saying Chelsea... Well, I was fucking there. What do you expect? I was there for no, six exactly. years. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So people are saying Chelsea are yeah. favourites now with Lukaku. So that's a... Yeah. It's an interesting one that you've tipped May United. So I want to understand... Well, they might, they might be favourites because they're thinking we're going to score more than you and we've got a lot of creativity and we've got a lot of buzz and a lot of energy in the middle of the park. Mm. And we've got an absolute beast of a centre four we've bought back for three times what we sold him for. But I still think Chelsea can be got out at the back. Okay. And I'm saying that as an ex-defender who got fucking coated for making two mistakes as a 19-year-old. Uh, I know what I'm looking at. Um, so, Man United, obviously, uh, two big signings, Sancho, J- Jaden Sancho, and yep. Varane, although he didn't play against Leeds, yep. um, from yep. Real Madrid. Um, yep. Is that is that the reason you see them no. being really successful because of those signings? No. Or what was, so, what's, 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 your, what's your thinking? Out of all the top teams, um, and I might be shot down in flames, I don't know, over the next couple of games, but it's just just my opinion. Mm. Um, I think they've they've got two top draw goalkeepers, although I do think he's five past 12, the higher. Yeah. And I think if they get a chance to cash in on him, if I was Oli, I would do. Um, but they've got the other geezer back who was at Sheffield United on loan. I think he's capable of being a top draw goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, and out of all the other teams, apart from the goalkeeper, let's say a back five or, or even a back six, if he plays three centre-backs, I think they're uh, player for player. I think they've got um, just a, a tad more quality in those positions than Chelsea, a tad more quality in those positions than, and it's a big call than the Manchester City because I see um, like Mendy's a top draw player. I like the Russian um, I, I love Stones his renaissance last year and the way he performed in the Euros was nothing short of magnificent um, and it was a great end to a great season for him Cole Walker's still going um, I thought he was one of England's play, players of the tournament and then he comes back to league football on the um, you know sort of the mundane week to week he's capable of uh, blowing a gasket and, and, and have, uh, causing a major rick or having a major have, rick having the line as you say Having a Lionel, yeah. But then I look yeah. at, um, I think, player for player, you know, they, they were magnificent yesterday. I think they're better than Spurs at the back. Um, and then, I mean, basically, who does that leave? It just leaves Liverpool. Basically, they're all together. The glue that is Van, Van Dyke. Uh, the goalkeeper signed a five-year deal. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, uh, their tactic is, is keep what we've got, it seems. And, or uh, well, their strategy is keep what we've got. And, um, you know, with Van Dyke coming back, it will galvanise the, the team to, to go on to be as good as they were a couple of seasons ago. Well, in terms of this, you know, I think the theme of this uh, these, these couple of chats has, has been the clock. Has been the yeah, well, yeah. We, we need to call it something. The clock, actually, um, <laughs> we need to call it a name like the transfer clock. And it's the transfer, transfer yeah, clock. the transfer clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll call it that for the time being. So the transfer clock. Um, because certainly with Liverpool, you know, um, I think you mentioned, I know a theme of what you've said on numerous podcasts before is shuffling the pack and, you know, just just almost doing it for the sake of doing it. You know, not that the players are, are bad players. It's just that you just need to mix things up a little bit. And they yeah. haven't done that, Liverpool. They've still got uh, Salah. They've still got Marnet. OK, uh, mate, he played instead of Firmino at the weekend. Um, your man, what's his name? I've completely lost his name. Forgot his name, but anyway, they still got Sane and Mane. They've still got, I mean, when Aldum's gone out, and... he, made, he made a goal for Firmino. Firmino did not. He not. He scored. He, made... he did, yeah, but he, he, he didn't yeah. start though. Just, you know the bloke. Yeah, they signed from Wolves, the Portuguese 
Fellas. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it Jot- Jota? Jota? Yeah, Jota. Yeah, he started in- instead of Firmino, didn't he? That was all. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So healthy competition. They've got healthy competition for players, depending on what system they want to play. Yeah. Um, I think they've got uh, one of the best three left backs in the world. Yeah. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold uh, is capable of great, great things. He was yeah. unlucky with his hamstring prior to the tournament. He's a top draw player, and Van Dyke. Yeah, um, and Gomez and Matip are back as well, which obviously yeah. they didn't even have them last season. So that's three new centre halves they got. Yeah, I mean it's the usual suspects, isn't it? I just think yeah. like there might be. It's going to depend on who. It's, it's the obvious thing to say. Who, who does work the best in the in the mini league? I just think like, he, especially if he's at it, the likes of Pogba, like he was yesterday. I can't understand the stick he keeps taking. Um, it's all about trying to get the best out of him. It was quite what, what he said. I see the, the, the little disagreement between Micah Richards and uh, and Sunis, and um, I thought he had a relevant point, very valid, relevant, well-made point. Where Micah Richards, when he was talking about Pogba, kept, kept getting coated, and yeah, Harry Kane hasn't um, turned up for training allegedly, and uh, it, you know, it's, mm. everyone's sort of saying, well, you know, he, he's a club legend. He, he should be this and this and given a certain amount of leeway it's just like i think what it was the point he was trying to make is you know you, you the, the media seem to pick and choose whose side they're on yeah yeah well, and uh if you if you if you put your arm around popper and you make him feel wanted and loved i would imagine that's the type of uh, performance you're going to get uh because he's obviously got a rapport with fernandez and he he knows that fernandez ain't there Bruno, that is, to be fucked about, and he's placed demands on him. Yeah, and yeah. you look at the balls he's threading through yesterday, and all of a sudden they've struck up a mutual respect forward slash chemistry, and there's your end result. And it, so, but it, it, you know, it's going to be the usual suspects. You know, Man United, if Kane goes to City, I think that puts them uh, favourites above United, and then uh, closely followed by Chelsea and Liverpool. I'd, I'd, I'd actually put Liverpool slightly above Chelsea uh, unless they get their act together at the back. Who who's do you think's the best manager out of them four? And and do you think it comes down to that sometimes? Because they've all got fucking brilliant players, and um, you know who, who squeaks it over the line. I, I, the reason, to be honest, I've just you know, to, to say why I asked that question is, Oli Golasowski guy just isn't of that ilk. You know, he's not on the same level, and I just wonder whether that could. Cause an well, issue. Or, well, they seem you know. to think highly enough of him. I mean, it's sometimes it's not about. See, this is where I see where he's coming from, Lord Hudson, in bygone days. I, I see Ollie as uh, making relevant coaching points, mm. um, but I see him as more of a manager and, and, and delegating to staff around him. Whereas with Pep, I think I see him. I see him more as a as a coach than a manager. Right. Um, yeah. And then with Klopp, I see him as a bit of both, but more manager than coach. Mm. And then with Tommy Tickle, I see him as uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see him as being the best coach in the club, but also the manager, which I think is what you, you goes back to what Don Al said and what I've always believed. That's that the, the best coach in the club should be the manager. I think we should call him Hair Tickle from now on. It's a mixture of, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean it's joking aside. It's um, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. To be fair, um, and. I mean, it's the culture names. of the club. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, Joe? It's the culture of the club comes into play. You know what I mean? I know firsthand that, that Ferguson couldn't coach. I know it firsthand from people who worked under him. Obviously, the best best manager on paper in British history of the so game. It, so, are we saying that it's um, you kind of need to decompartmentalise it? You can't be both. Well, it's too difficult to be both at that elite level um, and you're either one or the other, basically. And um, if, you, if you're a manager, then you get the, co- the good, the shit-hot coaches around you. If you're a coach, you get someone in to, to do the man management side. Yeah, whatever, whatever way you look at it, you've got to have the final say. Yeah. That's the bottom line. You've got to have the final say. And um, all, all the people you're mentioning, I, I should imagine that's the case. Yeah, I yeah, can't, yeah. you know, the signings that have been made, uh, particularly Sancho Man United, I don't think, like, listen, I like to think that the, the the manager wouldn't allow people to be bought in over his head. You know what I mean? 
um, without his without his final say so. And I, I think that I think the same goes to all, all four of the top top four clubs. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think whoever's, whoever's uh, the go-to guy in terms of like whether it's head coach or manager, forward slash head coach or, or just manager, he, ultimately he's got the final say. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Makes sense. Um, who would be your one to watch? Um, who do you think will outperform? I suppose you could say West Ham was that team last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'd, be my, that'd be my team again this year. Okay. Yeah, that would be my that would be my team to watch this year. I can't listen. I'm going to be honest. I can't brutally honest. I can't see um, I can't see Watford surprising anyone. I can't see Burnley surprising anyone. I can't see Villa surprising. I can't see Newcastle. I no. can't see Southampton. Um, Palace. Palace. Nah, none of them. Brighton. None of them. No. Nah. 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 It, I think out of Spurs and West Ham. It depends yeah. on the impact Nuno's made, or what, yeah, or the, or the impact Nuno sure. makes, and mm-hmm. it depends on the Kane situation. Yeah. For, listen, for my money, they're better off saying, "Look, can we have a chat about things?" And if it's the money side of it, as well, because you're looking at maybe um, just shy of a 100% rise if he goes to City. Because I, I was speculating with, with his dad what he would be on. I said, well, "Whatever he's on, his." Um, Listening to third-party opinions, um, he's probably getting paid at least sixty grand short of what he should be paid. Right, that was way back then. When, yeah. And then <clears throat> here we are, like sort of uh, f- like three years later, and he's reputedly on in excess of two two hundred k. Um, and if he goes to City, he's on four hundred k. I think he's better off um, trying to make himself the ultimate Spurs legend and stay there and win something with a much bigger pay packet, sign a, a, and try and agree a, a newer deal on top of the new deal, sign a newer deal. Um, because the, the longer it goes on, the, the more it's going to cause them problems. But having said that, I think if anyone's going to, um, you know, polish it and, and make it look a little bit brighter, it'd be the manager they've got. <coughs> I like the way he comes across. I think he's got a lovely, it looks like he's got a lovely disposition. You know what I mean? He looks like someone out of one flow of the cuckoo's mess. I don't, uh, Nest, I, I wouldn't want to... <laughs> You know what I mean, Joel? Yeah. Want to upset him. But you know nah, when he talks, he's, a goalie, like wouldn't he? yeah. he's got like a soft sort of thing and all yeah, that. You he's know, a and, and, yeah. yeah, the way it comes across, and um, you could see why people play for him. Yeah, he's thoughtful and, and sort yeah. of yeah, yeah, kind, very, yeah. very bright, very aware mm. guy. I think. Yeah, yeah. you know and, the way and he got good they, coach. They, they tried to give him players. credit. They put the thing in his face. He tried to give him credit with a microphone. And he went straight, he put it straight onto the players. Mm. How hard they worked, unbelievable work rate. They really deserved the result, the boys. That I was so pleased with them today, etc. These sort of thing, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, yeah, he yeah. took it away and straight onto them. You know, yeah, that's... I thought, that's sorry. No, I just thought it was really yeah. good. Yeah. And yeah. I, that's why I think if the surprise package could be them or um, West Ham again. West Ham, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we ain't mentioned Rafa. And I'll look, no, well, I was look, ask you I'll look him, at yeah. Rafa <coughs> and you Top get manager, what it is. What a manager. Yeah, so, and he, he's achieved a lot. But, you know, mm. you just think yourself, if that was played 100 times, 99 times out of 100, AC Milan would have gone on to win that, uh, stayed 3 0 or won it 3 mm. 1. You know what I mean? That's what made you, uh, that, that made his legend when supposedly when he said they're laughing at you. Here we are at a European Cup final, paraphrase. You're 3 0 down after 25 minutes. They're laughing at you. You know what I mean? Mm. And obviously they've got steam coming like the Carragers. They're going to have steam coming out their ears, fucking bodies everywhere, which is how it should be when you're a centre-back. You know what I mean? If someone's rattled your cage and uh, you've, the opposition are taking the piss out, you're in your manager's challenge, yeah? Spots on how it should be. And then like the uh, thing, he basically got hold of the game by the scruff of the neck, Gerard, and virtually took it to penalties on his own. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. that's what made his legend. But this is what I'm going to say to you, Right. This could be uh, tits up by Christmas. Let me tell you why. If you've got a thing whereby there's a constant undercurrent of people not wanting, they, oh, they got off to a good start yesterday, but who did they beat at the end of the well, day? Well, Southampton got struck, weren't they? Right. And, and you look at it, and, you, and, and it, especially if we've still got another couple of weeks, is it August the 31st? You know, the talk of certain players leaving, that's going to make it even harder for them, right? Unless the geezer's got like, 
unbelievable players waiting in the wings on the continent that no one knows about. Who's this now? We're talking about Southampton. Uh, Asen, oh. Asen, right? Yeah, Asen, you yeah, to, I know. Yeah, to, save, to save their season. But uh, sticking to, to Rafa, right? I've been in a situation where, see, look, he, he's gone, he's gone and took a few quid off the Sidley Winks and now he wants to get back in the Premier League and he's gone to somewhere where his family are based. So everything's fell in place for him. But the, the key component, the biggest single most important thing is, is it's a club where really and truly, if the truth be told, the hardcore support don't want him. Because when he was Liverpool manager, he said they're a small club. You understand? Which I suppose he was telling the truth in terms of achievement mm. compared to Liverpool. Mm. You know what I mean? We've won the European Cup more than any time, any other British club in history, mm. right? Etc. and league titles and FA Cups and blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, he was only sort of telling the truth, but he's rubbed them up the wrong way. Well, I know full well, when you've got an undercurrent of things where some people want you and, and they can see what you're trying to do and they'll do anything to help you and players will have a go for you, right? It's a complete waste of time if you've got the other half who say, oh, he's come up from youth coach, he was the cheap option, um, he was already in situ, who else was they going to get? Uh no one else would have took it on, uh, you know, cutting the players, the playing staff by off, <coughs> etc. Let's just wait and see how he goes. But really and truly, you know, they don't want you there. And yeah. don't matter how, how well you, you, you know, you try and come across, don't matter how many times you stop to talk to them on the way from you, where you park your car to the main ground and giving them behind the scenes information on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to set up, what you're trying to achieve. It's a complete and utter waste of time and energy. And I think that could be, um, apart from the, you know, the unbelievable paycheck and maybe a settlement, uh, that could be the experience that Rafa's in for. Interesting, because I, yeah, that, that, I, I didn't expect you to say that. Because um, it, 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 it's maybe obviously it's not the same as Everton and, and Liverpool, but the Chelsea fans didn't want him at Chelsea either, did they? And um, he won, he won the Europa League, didn't he, or something? Yeah, you know, he sort of and. I suppose you know better than anyone else. Fans are fickle, aren't they? So it depends how he gets gets going. Oh, I suppose fickle beyond belief. And you think yeah. politics is bad, right? Yeah. Nowhere near as bad as politics in football. Pol you, you think politics of the country are bad? You think politics in the EU is bad? But none of them come anywhere near politics in football. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's giving you a little insight into. Uh, the stuff like little shit storms that go on behind the scenes and you've got mischievous fucks inside clubs and on the periphery of clubs. And it doesn't matter the club. It could be a big club. It could be a, a, a small club like the one I was at, but they're continuously lighting little fires. Mm. And um, I was thinking along the right lines because I watched the thing on Netflix about Ferguson. And what I try to uh, say to the directors is we've got to be, I'm trying to create a separate entity whereby it's me and the staff and the players. And you've got to be sort of, let's say, semi-detached from the boardroom, the goings-on in the boardroom, the goings-on at the club, the financial situation at the club, and the supporters. You understand? And mm. then I had another separate thing with regards to the youth, which I was uh, uh, assumed control of and turned us into an A1 calibre academy. You understand what I mean? So I knew I was thinking along the right lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, it, it, but at the end of the day, Joe, like life, you don't need me to tell you you're a businessman. At the end of the day, it's a lot of it's common sense. A lot of yeah. it's common sense. Right? But the problem is, well, it's, it's not judgment. very common. It's judgment. It's judgment. And, and yeah. obviously, a lot yeah, of people yeah, ain't yeah. got judgment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if I was asked to judge the situation now, I'd say, you know what? I ain't going anywhere fucking near the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So it makes you, it begs the question, where, why would someone like, you know, uh, Benitez, because he can be, you know, he's got, um, I thought he was one of the weak links at Palace. He got a wonder goal a couple of years ago, Townsend, but it's just my personal opinion. I thought, I thought he was one of the, he was one of the uh, weaker players at Palace. Yeah, I, I thought he flattered to deceive. Mean. So I, I thought that you. was a strange, a strange signing, even though it was a free transfer. Again, you're going to have a decent basic wage, the bum fluffery of a signing on fee, probably agent's fees, and he's got himself a two year deal. Right? Well, he's 30. So there's no resale value there. You understand what I mean? He's just basically, he's bought a player who can, who knows the ropes and he can, he can yeah. maybe trust him a little bit. It's where we're can, talking, yeah. We're talking about five to 12, 12 o'clock, five past 12. Yeah. He's got a player on a free transfer who's at 20 past 12. <laughs> 
you get nearly, it's nearly like it's basically lunchtime with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and he looks like he, he don't miss a lunch. <laughs> um, okay, so the other teams you haven't mentioned in terms of ones to watch is Leicester. Um, well, and Leeds and Norwich, but I think just to just to get your thoughts on Leicester because they are tracking really well. Tracking really well. I've, yeah, I think like Norwich off, and I still maintain Brentford to get a dose, uh, uh, beg your pardon, a, ha- a harsh dose of reality, mm. Premier League reality. Uh, once the adrenaline and novelty wears off and it comes down to the week to week grind, um, I still think they're in, in for, uh, like I say, a, a, a massive uh, dose of harsh reality in the Premier League. Um, you know, it's, it, I mean, Friday was everything, wasn't it? Newly promoted yeah, team, the, crowd, yeah. the opening game, crowds Adrenaline. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? And, and, and I mean? a weak Arsenal team, you know, so, like say so a fragile Arsenal team. Oh, they're minging. They're minging. Mm. Arsenal, Arsenal are minging. It's, it's, Ty, it's probably, Tyrone minging. One of the worst you've seen, one of the worst you've seen in, your, in, in my lifetime. You know what I mean? And, um, I've, yeah. you know, Arsenal fans are going ballistic on social media. Um, I, I still maintain, I don't think it's all Arteta's fault. I still maintain it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to support him because he's, he's supposedly a revered coach. But yeah. I just think like he's, um, he's a bit like myself. Your arrogance and your ambition cloud your judgment. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, he's, it, I don't know. He thought he was, to me, a complete layman. He had the look of someone when he got the Arsenal job of wanting to be the next uh, Pep. You know, he's at, he's at Man City. He was in that world and he had the swagger and arrogance of, I'm going to show you Pep on, on the man, you know. Um, I, don't, I think it put Pep's nose out joint. It seemed to me, I don't think Pep was very happy that he left. Mm. And, uh, yeah, he's all of a sudden, he's well, welcome, it could be welcome, welcome like you- to the trenches. Yeah, welcome to the fucking real world. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. He, mm. He's down to earth with a bump, isn't he? Mm. You know what I mean? That's that's when I talk about a dose of harsh reality. That's a dose. That's a dose of the harsh reality of management, mm. uh, especially when you've got like uh, cheats in the club, blagging a living yeah. on the playing side and on the non-playing side. You know what I mean? It's a sweeping generalisation, but there's no excuse. Um, if you've been a former international and you're well, supposedly well connected, and you've got the the uh, technical director or the, or, the, or the managing director's job or the management of recruitment's job, what the CEO's job is, and there's a player, there's no excuse whatsoever to give anything less than hundred percent and be tough and hard to beat, resilient, physical, um, and then on the on the other side, know what you're working with in terms of money. And once you once you get your teeth into a bone, as it the bone being a player that you want, you don't let go. You pull out all the stops. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. If I say you say what you know, what would you like if you if he if he wants lunch in a lap dancing club, I'll take him. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, to, yeah. To, to get him, you got to do what you got to do. That's the situation. That's the, unfortunately, that's the environment. These the days of we're Arsenal come and sign for us, and we're doing you a favour. They're, they're long gone, decades ago. You know. He was talking about what it was like in the old, you know, not even in the old days, but when you played. But up until relatively recently, Arsenal had a way about them that was, you know, very, very hard to beat and um, very professional, blah, blah, blah. But also, you know, a good team to watch certainly in latter years. Um, this thing about, we mentioned Spursy, which arguably Arsenal have caught that uh, disease off, off Spurs. Is that does that come from the culture of players playing in the youth team when they can coast a little bit, even in the youth team and they can get away with certain things and that just kind of, I don't know, spreads throughout and, and just gets, just stays until the, if and when they make it into the first team. Do you, I'm just trying to work out what, how that culture persists and how it, or how the rot sets in. Well, yeah, it does. And it has, and uh, what you've got to do as manager and what you've got to do as um, an underling to the manager who reports to the manager, you've got to make it quite clear that um, players are either they're up to it or they're not up to it. And you've got to be totally ruthless. So I've told this story before, but I'll tell it because I don't think I've told it on here. Um, a guy I've, 
who worked as a coach, uh, and I wanted him as my number two at Lake Norrent when I was trying to put in a in place, a, you know, a, a three, five, seven, ten year plan, was Pat Holland, uh, former West Ham player, and um, he got us a bit of scouting work for Arsenal and Manchester City. Um, and then he said, what we'll do, we'll go to the game together. He said, and what I'll do, I'll hand it over to you. I'll, I'll, I'll ring them and I'll say that I'm going to vouch for you. So you do, the, you do the work for the Man City and I'll do the work for Arsenal. Steve Rowley was the chief scout. Then he says, you know what, I need to get back coaching. So somehow he, he manages to get a bit of work at the Arsenal as a coach. And then he took, apparently, uh, so the story goes, um, he took an age group at Arsenal and they played a game and they didn't get off to a very good start. And they, got, I think they got a bit of an hammering. So what, what he's tried to do is have an immediate post-match inquest. And when he's asking people's opinions to get feedback, which he was always uh, ahead of his time like that, Patsy, he, he'd always call the players in and um, he'd, he'd always, any, any observations, anyone got anything to say? Does anyone want to say anything? Is there any feedback? Uh, how do you think it went, etc.? Um, I knew that from playing under him when he was coach at Lake Norwich for a year. He got promoted from youth team to first team by Frank Clark and then left and went to Spurs. But while he was at Arsenal, they've took a good eye and he's holding the post-match inquest. And then um, I actually remarked, that tells me more about the players and the club they're playing for than it does the coach. Apparently, a couple of people said, well, we think um, the warm-up wasn't very good. And when you warm up as a player, you warm up for yourself. Mm. You don't warm up for anybody else. Mm. You don't, you don't, that's something I learned maybe a little bit too late or by the time I went to um, my third club. Um, I'm not interested in what other people do. I'm only interested in what gets me ready. I'm only interested in whether I've got a few beads of sweat trickling down and my adrenaline's pumping and my chest is expanded and, and my heart's beating a little bit quicker and I'm ready and my adrenaline's up and I'm, I'm, I literally used to say in my mind, right, I'm fucking ready for you cunts. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 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 Sorry yeah, about yeah. the language on here. Yeah. But mum, she says, is that what you used to say? I used yeah. to go, yeah, I'm ready for you. Come on, you cunts, I'm ready for you. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're yeah. getting yourself psyched and you get yourself like, uh, maintained. Warm you can't, mind. they call it pa passion. Um, I'll call it passion forward slash anger. You can't play professional sport without a little bit of anger. Mm. It doesn't matter what it is. Well, so that's determination, isn't it? You know, I, mean, I look at Castle, yeah. come, Stevie, come on, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, Kenny yeah, Dick yeah. Is alongside me, come and dig, I'll keep, make sure you keep bossing me, da da da, yeah, this yeah, yeah, Keith, yeah. Keith Dyer, say, Dago, fucking, let's get a foot in early, you know what I mean? Mm, 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 mm. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, what, so massively. When you've got fucking 100%. players coming back at you who are under 23 or whatever the fuck, under 17, under 19, and they say, they've got the audacity to say, well, we don't think the warm up was very good, that's when you know as a club, you're fucking banging trouble. You're well, bang in trouble. Yeah, I mean, fuck me. That that's a that's a brilliant little anecdote there. Um, because fuck me, yeah, that is uh crazy. And you can you, you know, I'm not saying you can imagine it, but it, it, I can't um, that, what you just that that scenario which you painted really well of the, of how you used to prepare and you know fucking saying to your teammates, right, come on, let's go. You can't imagine the Arsenal players doing that. You just can't. It just it don't seem right, does it? It don't seem you can't imagine yeah. doing that for a game. Oh, I, I went from being a quiet sort of um, see, I was like that youth team at Chelsea, reserve team at Chelsea, captain reserves at 18. Those levels they came too easy to me, and then I got into the first team. And I might have even got, even got into the first team before I was ready, or I might have got into the first team up because of circumstances, which I'm sure I did. Um, but then you, you're subservient to senior players like. You know, Ronnie Harris, uh, Mickey Droy, uh, Ray Wilkins, even even his brother. Uh, you know what I mean? And other, other players around the, the, the place. So you're waiting for them to boss you rather than you bossing them. But then I'll, I'll get to a stage where I'm thinking to myself, having suffered uh, as, uh, and, and been a, a, a statistic in the culling process of someone who, uh, to this day, I maintain he was a West Ham spy because he basically ran the bollocks office for nine months. Um, with nothing, no technical information or organisation whatsoever. Um, I was determined it didn't happen again. So I, I went to Mill like a fucking absolute animal. Mm. 
Do you know what I mean? It was too late by then. I was already on the slippery slope. But then I thought to myself, it's up to me. If this is the lifestyle I'm used to, that I've become accustomed to, that I want, I've got to, I've got to maintain that level that I should yeah. have been maintaining at Chelsea. I maintained it all the way through my career in the lower divisions. Yeah, which is, but you you do what yeah. you do what gets you ready, Joe. You've got to do yeah. what gets you ready. Well, Roy, Roy Keane says that, doesn't he? I mean, he, he's a big exponent of, of, of playing for yourself and, and being ready, being professional. Fuck what yeah. everyone else does, you know. Fuck yeah. almost what the manager says. You, you know, you're your own boss, basically. You are. You, know, you, you know. are. I, I, I agree. I, I would agree with Roy more than any anybody else, including his manager. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. I want stand. I, if, if you're looking at who you want next year, shoulder to shoulder in a row, in the trenches, or in a football match, I'd pick him every every time. Yeah, yeah. I'd pick him every time. I know where he's coming from. Do you know what I mean? And I knew. Um, and I know the difference. Uh, I've, I found the difference out a long time ago between someone like him who would give you like a G up or a bollocking or like teammates I had um, I'd give you a G up and a, a semi bollocking compared to some of the stuff that was when it uh, went on at Chelsea, which was uh, completely undermining um, borderline like fucking mental torture and mental stress that Mings talks about. Um, and it's uh, it was just as much about making them feel better about themselves. Yeah. Because they, they basically had someone to talk down to. That that, that wouldn't happen. Uh, a few months later, that wouldn't have happened. But it was too late by then. Yeah. You know, I have to show you how powerful, or how, how positive, but also how destructive a culture can be. And how right, yeah. how yeah, important yeah, yeah. it is to yeah. get a right one. Oh, so that's yeah. what I said to Pat. Pat, I know you inside out. Upside down, back to front. I know, I know you can handle his shit, which is why I wanted him as my number two at Lake Norrin when ultimately I thought I'd done a three-year deal with Vern, right? And I put ended up putting the final nail in my own coffin, right? Because it was him who they appointed and I didn't know that there was negotiations going on behind me back. He was interviewing managers behind me back. And <laughs> the bottom line being, I know he can handle his shit, right? So when you've got players coming back at you, not, not play, I ain't talking Adams or Henri, I'm talking fucking kids, coming back at you saying, well, we didn't think the warm-up was good enough. That's when you know you're banging trouble yeah. within the football club. You know what I mean? The culture was too soft. It went from too soft. See me, I was somewhere in the middle. And people, I'll never, ever had the respect or the credit for it. And um, I was judged by my outspoken nature, uh, gregarious personality, pugnacious looks. I was somewhere between what you need, which is um, the hardcore... Uh, strict disciplinarian side of someone like Graham and then the soft, friendly sort of player welfare side of Wenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Players who tell the truth about me, right, they should tell you uh, that I took a keen interest in them off the field just as much as on the field. Which is why must, that, that, that documentary must hurt so much because it didn't show... You know, only showed the bits that they thought would sell advertising. You know what I mean? And get viewers, not not yeah. the true story. No, no, we need a true story. Which must be horrific. To, to... Yeah, it is. It has been. Yeah, it has been. You want to talk about people want to talk about fucking stress that been under a mental health. When I look back through my life, it's just been like um, trying to walk through a minefield. Mm. You understand? And somehow, or like I say to people in the back of the cab when we're talking about other things like the the difference between uh, the scum gangsters on the street and gangsters in the establishment and good people like us are squashed in the middle. I said, we're like, we're like goldfish swimming through razor blades. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying, Joe? Yeah. Well, and, yeah. And it's, it's one little mistake, you know, and it's, it's so hard to get back up. Cause you haven't sliding door shit, isn't it? Yeah, sliding yeah, door shit. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, sliding yeah. doors moment, they call it. Yeah, you, you, and you can't get the time back. You can't. You, you, you can't come back. You know what I mean? But, but people just, that yeah. people that connected though and got the networks, they can make them. They can make them two, three, four, five, six times in their life, and they oh and yeah, they, and they, get, have, and they yeah. get the opportunity because they know yeah. the right people. And yeah, it's fucking... Danny Boyle said that, um, there was something strangely romantic about Paul Skull's training and playing. In, match, in matches for Manchester United and then going home immediately after training or after matches to his, ironically, his party company now with her after 35 years. But he said, it's something strangely romantic about him going straight home to his wife and his family. 
and not wanting the bright lights and the, and the thing and all that. And I went from being out three, four times a week at Chelsea and Millwall, right, to as a consequence of the journey, not going out at all at Gillingham, and then coming of age at Leighton Orient and or not really wanting to mix with dubious company um, to – so from a social animal, I just, I just want to go out to my wife and me mm. and, and my little ones yeah. when they started to come along. Do you know what I mean? So you get yeah. penalised for that, knowing that, you know, the jobs are given out over networking via a game of golf or fucking half a lager. Yeah, yeah. You know Eight points, yeah. You, you the understand Tuesday club and all that, yeah. Yeah, all that bollocks. You know what I mean? I'll oh, fucking waste my time. But that, if if you live right, if you train properly and live right and you and you rest and recuperate and you're, you're approaching uh, your profession appropriately, correctly and your refuel fueling habits are and and listen more to the point i've i dabbled with it at chelsea which was the wrong time to do it i got caught up in all that so um, more importantly what i was going to say having, having to write the next day off with hangover I don't know, you're, you're missing you're cutting you're yeah. cutting days there's people who have had managers jobs they've cut like not days but months and years out of their life where they, they can't remember a thing mm. <laughs> you know what i mean so uh, I just went from one extreme to the other, and it, it is what it is. Uh, the, the gaff I was at was, like I said, was a, was a waste of time and talent, and it's just, ever since it's just been a waste of knowledge. Just going back to the forward look, uh, crystal ball time. Um, I know there's been one game, but you know that doesn't really matter. You said Man United. Uh, no, it did yeah. Before that, yeah. so just if if I could get a, a winner out of you that would be nice all right Maybe i'm gonna just four. quick quickly endorse why i said it joe i spoke about mm. the goalkeeper in the back and the back four or back five i think they've got like player for player i think they've got cracking defenders i think player for player they've got cracking mid midfielders but i think what he's done uh ollie is added to already what is already a very potent force mm -hmm. in terms of it's like i've always said you've got to have a goal threat from many wide and varied different areas you yeah. understand as many as from as many positions as possible and from as many situations as possible. And I think Man United have fallen into that category quite nicely. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I think that possibly, well, with Varane, not possibly, got the best defence. Yeah. And that, that's a pun, powerful defence. Power, yeah. power, powerful defence. Yeah. I don't think anyone comes near that. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think a lot, see, a lot of it hinges on what happens with him, kind. But even then, um, he's got to be on them all the time. Guardiola's got to, because I thought he was Grealish. He was well, like, what's the old expression? Over egg in the pudding. Hmm. You understand? He overindulged himself. It's yeah. no good that um, but, 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 and step over and bump. If you could, you, if, if you can do damage by just getting the ball off line, you know, taking the ball off line, getting the ball off line, changing the ball, uh, the line of the ball, whatever expression you want to use, right? Uh, I used to say to a player, you know, just just take it offline and, pew, you know what I mean, whip it in mm. or whip it in with his left peg. Yeah. He'd do far more damage and he'd be far more effective, effective doing that than we do keep doing a Fosbury flop. Yeah, yeah, just getting fouls, yeah. Um, okay, so what was the name? Who's going to win the league? Me, me, my personal opinion, I think is if Kane goes to City, that, that makes them favourites. Um it's the usual suspects. I'm going to go out out of the usual suspects. I'm going to go marginally in favour of Man United. Okay. Um, um, I might I might have to review it. I mean, I'll get a better picture when I've seen four or five games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, normally around about October, you say this is where we're at. You know what I mean? Then you see who's going to be scrambling for like a panic buy in January. Yeah. Um, do Leicester make the top four? No. Okay. Um, I think you said Tottenham to be the kind of, uh, well, team that overachieves, maybe West Ham. Um, West Ham. Yeah. Who underachieves? And that leads me to the next question, which is who goes down or who do you fear for? Who do you think, fucking hell, they're going to have a hard season? I don't know you, but I'll leave it up to you. Burnley. Yeah, Okay. I think he's um, been nothing short of a miracle worker there <laughs> on a very limited budget. But I would yeah. like to have seen Mr. Dyche um, 
test himself in another boardroom, in another culture, another club. Yeah. With, with more expectancy. And I just think things are going or they've gone a bit stale there. They've got a lot of players who are all sort of coming to midnight, five, five, five past midnight. midnight. Yeah. You get me all at the it's same time. He just yeah. ain't got the redis. He ain't got the redis to turn over, turn it over. Um, so he, he, again, he's going to have to draw blood out of a stun somehow. Yeah. So I fear for them. Um, I think Norwich and dare I say it, Brentford are going to get a dose, a, a, a dose of harsh reality, even after their opening day uh, heroics. Yeah. Um, maybe even Brighton. Thing is, there's a lot of when you look at it, there's a lot of poor sides like you haven't even mentioned Southampton, Palace, Villa. Um, but listen, Palace could be in the relegation scrap from from um, basically from October, yeah. There's a lot of poor right, sides this year, isn't there? Uh, see, what listen, there's the, the, the gap's growing ever wider. That's yeah. why, uh, I know I was right, I've not, I know, I know I've been right all along. You need to uh, let, let a manager or be able to let a manager. Um, invest in his own culture. So it's like he used to say, Wilkinson, there's basically two ways to success. There's the, the slow, sure, long, hard route of turning players over, producing your own players, having a core element at homegrown and slowly but surely wins the race, or you can go bang and throw money at it. And yeah. There's no guarantees. You understand? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite disappointed. I thought he deserved, he deserved better. I thought he deserved more respect, Roy Hodgson. Do you know what I mean? In terms of like um, money being made available, all of a sudden because it's Vieira, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like his, 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 his judgments any better than Hodgson? Um, <sighs> world class player, world class player, world class midfield player, uh, very high profile. But you know, wait and see. Once results start going tits up, you'll see. Well, it's like they, they that mean nothing. The Frank point I make is joking, wasn't he? Before, yeah, before well, yeah. That means that it's so. Yeah. yeah. So once the results go go tits up, that that counts for nothing. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Any, any that'd be more? my top. What you've named. What you've named is you've named. You're probably the top six, top seven now. Um. It, from seven from seven up to one, you know, I'd probably go uh, West Ham, Spurs, Leicester. Or West Ham, Leicester, Spurs, um, and then it's four, three, two, one. Um, I would say a bit of a choker, but I'd probably say uh, Chelsea fourth, Fucking Liverpool hell. third, uh, United second if City sign Kane. Uh, City might even finish third or fourth if they don't get Kane. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I'll, I'll just think to myself, they're, they're flat to deceive. Like yesterday, they're flat to deceive to the edge of the box. Mm. And then they were found wanting. There's no focal point. They're desperate for Kane or anyone mm. like it of his ilk because there's yeah. no focal point and there's no one like, if, if I whip it in, I know he's going to get a, a surface to it and get on the end of it. Well, I it suppose they'll like have it. to sign someone if they, don't, if they don't get Kane, which yes. they won't. Yes. They'll have to yes. get someone, but there ain't many of them around. Yeah. They might have to go rogue and get some fucking, I don't know. Mid, mid I think, I think like like you're talking about the other little mob uh, hovering around the bottom. Despite the result yesterday, I think Villa should be all right, but only because of the likes of Ings. You know yeah, what I mean? Tried yeah, and, uh, and uh, Watkins. Yeah, prove, proven goal scorers now. Yeah, Watkins, Ings for a while, and Watkins uh, as a consequence of his form last year. Mm. So you know, it, yeah. it, But with them, it it might be one of those situations we uh, we hope to score more than you do. Because yeah. I still don't fancy him at the back. Well, I suppose there's still two weeks left, or just under two weeks of the, of the, yeah. the transfer. So it's going to be fucking a lot of these teams are going to have to shore up and uh, yeah, yeah, pull rabbits out of hats in terms of transfers. Because I'm looking at it now. It's funny when you mention it. I just think there's a lot of teams there that are in trouble. Yeah, yeah. You know, any any one yeah. of them could go from about six yeah. or seven sides. And I'm looking at it, and I'm just thinking to myself. Goodness me. It's a game. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Go on. No, I was going to say, that I cut across you, but the league, like you just said, I was just, the, the, the league seems to be just two leagues now. Yeah. you got those who are happy to stay up. Or maybe three. three. Yeah, maybe three. Yeah. But that, that, even that one's getting squeezed. They're like the squeezed middle class. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, your Everton's and your fucking 
But I'm looking at it, Joe. I'm looking even in, in. I missed it because I was working Saturday night. I like to watch that EFL on Quest with uh, with Colin. Yeah. And um, you look Colin Murray, but you look at it. And I think to myself, the setups right, the academies are right, the grounds are right, the grounds are safe, the surface is superb. Uh, coaching qualifications coming out there are, although very little man hours and experience. Some of them have sprung out of nowhere. Never played the game, laced the port, never laced a pair of boots on in anger, as I say. Um, magnificent athletes, magnificent training regimes, diet, physiology, and anatomy, rest periods, uh, algorithms to sort out uh, red zones and all, the all other all that, bullshit, yeah. right? And yet, um, I look at it, and still, after years and years of talking about it, it still seems that defending's a dying art, mm. or rather than a dying art. It's as dead as a cat on a motorway. You know what I mean? Well, maybe Man United will prove us. Yeah, I mean that, that may be why they're they're so focused on making sure they they've got a good defence. Because when when is a good defence won the league? That used to be the prerequisite, didn't it? Mm, the foundation, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I, I've got to be honest. I, I, I agree with him. Last I did say it on a previous podcast. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did, or at least on another interview, I, I just said the difference between uh, City this year, as in last season, and in C- uh, bygone season, I just think they've been more, more reliable at the back. And a lot of that can be attributed For to sure. yeah. uh, who they bought and uh, Stones, the Renaissance, Renaissance of John Stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. You know I mean? yeah, I, w- I wasn't disagreeing with you when I said it's just it just shows you how bad the fences have got that yeah. you can actually win the league without having a particularly good yeah, defence. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. I meant. So I was, I was agreeing yeah. with you actually. But if you get both, if you got both ends right, you're in business. Yeah. Okay. But you know, like it seems like it's en vogue to place the accent on uh, um, these foreign words that have come in, like expansive football, which uh, mm. I don't know if I've misinterpreted it, interpreted what it means. As far as I was concerned, when I was brought up, it was all about creating space, make the pitch big, which is what I think they mean by expansive football. Like you know, get yeah. bumped this way and this way and that way. And uh, get playing, you know what I mean. Yeah. Let the ball do the work. Let the yeah. ball do the work. Um, keep it on the island. There's lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, um, that unless you got Frank, unless you got Frank Worth and caving in on you, <laughs> <laughs> like I had. Yeah. Um, all right, then, John. Well, um, and on to, to to next week. That was a good little couple of sessions, and. Um, as always, so we're back now. The John City and Football Uncensored podcast is back uh, for the new season. So, um, as always, please uh, message us, comment, like, subscribe. Um, we want to we want to get your feedback. We want to get get some of your questions into John. Um, yeah, by all means, yeah. send questions. Yeah, by yeah. all means, we'll but always it, answer them. We always do, don't we? But it was no, it was tracking nicely at the end of last last season, wasn't it, John? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think uh, you know people. Were, appreciated your comments on the euros and stuff so um we're keeping it going and uh let's hope it just builds a little bit yeah i mean i'll be honest i'll try to be positive uh, in in many aspects i'll, I'll, I'll never claim southgate as much as i could have done if the no. truth be told when you look at his decision making and when you when you look at um although i tipped it a little win it so i won't really going to go you know unless it was my own country you tip it, Lee. i won't i won't going to go against it um, and I thought we were found wanting. I thought he was found wanting tactically, and I, the, the, I still can't for the life of me work out the decisions he made with regards to um, the penalty takers he nominated. I think you need to a hard nosed uh, sort of assistant that's been there and done it, yeah, and, and, and yeah, got yeah. the t shirt. Yeah. So I think you need to start rewriting your CV, no, you what, update, what it, got, update it, yeah. yeah. Well, it's either that or it's what he's comfortable with, which is the geezer he's comfortable with, isn't it? So, look, Joe, sometimes I don't know whether how you work, right? Sometimes you need to be challenged. Well, you have to be challenged. That's the only way you get better. It's the only way you improve. Yeah. I've I'd always... have gone older in a minute. You, yeah. You're picking a 19 year old who's never taken a penalty in his life. It's his first tournament. You're picking someone who's hardly kicked a ball and he's come into the squad with a shoulder injury. Right, in, inver- in brackets, Rashford, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you're picking someone who's only played, I was shocked that before that thing, someone said he only played something like, is it seven minutes of football? 
in the tournament. Sancho. Well, he's admitted, yeah. Well, yeah, Rashford admitted after the Euros that he was. And uh, when you've got a confident boy like him, like I said, you could, we could have coveted him over a load of things, but we never. No. When you've got a confident boy like him, Grealish, do you know what I mean? Because I'm telling you he now with Grealish, I'm, I'm sitting there with my missus. He, he wanted the penalty. He said mm. he wanted the penalty. I said, okay, son, you have the penalty. I've got complete trust in you. Totally. You've, got a bit of swag, you've got a bit of swagger about you. Absolutely. But what we, I'll tell you what we've got to be careful with Jack is, with a the swagger there, is he don't go over the, over the waterfall. You understand? Yeah. He could, because he likes, oh, oh, listen, we're sitting there and I think I agreed, uh, me and my missus agreed, we're talking about it. And um, I said, we must have done something right. I said, I, dro I dropped my son at the airport this morning. His company's paid for him to go to Antigua. And he, he hugged me and kissed me and he hugged me again. And I, and, and I wished him a safe flight because we're not embarrassing all that. I've, I've, we, uh, I, I've always tried to make a fuss of my free that I've, anyway, just going off at a tangent. But anyway, mm. I said, we must have done something right because when he, um, he crossed the road with his bags at Gatwick and he turned to look at me and, and when I wished him a safe flight, he turned around and gave me one uh, final wave. And I've, I'll be honest, I've got a bit choked. So when I'm looking at youngsters and how we've operated, how we've worked, this is the point I make, Joe. I'm mm. looking at Jack Grealish and I'm thinking to myself, just be careful, son. Just be careful. Yeah. Because I think he likes the showbiz aspects of it a little bit too much. He likes the the, 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 the modelling side of it and the thing with the, you know, the, the lights and the thing and the, the headband. Band. The headband, yeah. But no, I think he likes all that a little bit too much. Could just... Think, just cast your mind back to what took you into Aston Villa's academy, because I can see him, one hundred percent, without question, unequivocally playing football in the in the street with his mates, uh, exactly the same as how he plays now. Yeah, well, he's like Gaz. He's like Gaz, really. Yeah, yeah. In that respect, you, you, get, you get what I mean, Joe. So yeah, now, totally. So now I'll be saying, to him, don't, don't spoil it. No, don't, well, don't fuck. He had these things where he got photographs spark out. I think it was Iron Apple or somewhere. Mm. Spark out on the fucking deck. He's done all that. He smashed smashed his Range Rover into every part of the vehicle at four o'clock in the morning during the beginning of lockdown. He's done all that. Come out the other side. Now, 25, 100 million pound move. You've got to show an aspect of maturity now. Yeah. I, get, get caught up in the showbiz. Well, let's hope so. Maybe in, in, in you know, Pat I really do. Right manager I really for do. Him in that respect. Because he, you know he why? Because he's got, grounded. you know why, Joe? He's got that likability about him. Oh yeah, he's a he's a legend, isn't he? Well, not legend, yeah. but he's a like he's a nice fella, and uh, yeah, he's got he has got humility about him as well. But yeah, let's hope he don't get too arrogant. Yeah. Um, right, we've got to leave it there, John. Because I've got oh, mate, lovely dinner. Um, and um, so please, I'll go on the record John. and thank yeah. you, thank you for your time and ah. finding a slot in your day in your very very busy schedule. No, well, appreciate that, but mate, it's I've always, you know, I I just couldn't. Yeah, it's been it's been hard, but it's good. I enjoy it, and um, hopefully everyone else enjoys. It. That's the main thing. Because I want what the most important thing is you having a platform to to get the the, the, the nuggets of, of knowledge and wisdom out your head. Which you yeah, know. well, even even if we get just like one or two out every cast, every podcast, mm. which hopefully we've done tonight, I'll yeah. give you a little behind the scenes taste of a couple of things and opinions on other couple of things yeah. and a couple of bits of technical information, and hopefully um, we've achieved that. We'll, 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 look, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely keep doing them. Um, they may not be as bang on the, the metronomic, but we'll still be doing them. That's just so. Uh, don't need to worry, everyone. And if John, you're at John, chat, John's not going anywhere. Watch, like, subscribe. Exactly. And please Cheers, share. Lass. All the best. Thank and you. Lasses, and lasses. See you later.